Hey everyone, Pastor Danny back with you here for episode 10 of our prayer series of videos that have been helping inspire us through this season of 21 days of prayer and fasting. Hey, last time we talked about some of the spiritual hindrances to prayer and some of the things that can get on the inside of us and keep us from spending time with God. Today I want to look at a couple of the practical reasons that prayer can be difficult and give us some strategies for how to overcome these practical problems. I want to identify two things about our culture living in 21st century America that can make prayer difficult. The first thought is this, that we're living in a culture that values productivity. You know, I've been around the world and been to other cultures and seen that there's really a big difference in our value for getting things done. And uh, a lot of times the rest of the world in America, we're always driven to this get to the next task, get to the next thing, produce the next widget, whatever it would be. Um, and I think sometimes it can be hard uh, just on a surface level to understand what is the productivity behind prayer. You know, I'm spending time talking to God, you know, but I, you know, is it really changing anything or doing anything? Is this really getting things done? I think if we were to dig a little deeper, we'd understand that prayer is actually one of the most productive things we can do because I believe that the definition of productivity is doing the things that God wants you to do. And without prayer, I don't know if you have a really good pulse on that. And so you might be spending time doing a lot of things, but you might just be doing the wrong things. So I think prayer is vital. Uh, but I totally understand that one of the things that keeps us from prayer is this constant thought, I have so much to do. There, there's so much to do, I just, I just don't have time to pray. I understand that. You know, the second thing that uh, we see uh, as a part of our culture is that we're in a culture that is always connected and therefore always distracted. We're living in the age of the notification. And I know it drives lots of us crazy, but we're living in this age where every time we get a text and every time we get an email and every time we get a phone call and every time someone sends us something on Facebook or there's a status update or, uh, you know, app wants to update on my phone or whatever it is, there's just this constant buzzing and dinging and it's all, hey, 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 grabbing for our attention. You know, this happens to me so much on my phone that uh, I am starting to suffer from these phantom <clears throat> tinglings on my leg, uh, you know, as if my phone's buzzing and uh, it's not even buzzing. It's not, <laughs> nothing's even happening, but I'm just thinking that it is. Jamie likes to make fun of me about that. Uh, it's a big problem. And so in our culture, it's so, so easy to get distracted. And I don't know if this ever happens to you, but uh, do you ever jump on Facebook and your, your intention is to send somebody like a legitimate, important message, let you know that you, that you care about them or you're trying to ask them a question or something like that. And then next thing you know, you've spent 45 minutes watching dumb cat videos and you're lost in political rants and it's just never anything that you intended, but you got distracted. I just think it's a pretty good uh, picture of what it's like to live in 21st century America. There's so much noise, there's so much vying for our attention that it can be very, very challenging to pray. So what are some things that we can do in light of these two cultures that we live in as Americans? Well, let me give you four things. Uh, number one, I think the most important thing that we can do is we need to decide that prayer has to become a priority. You know, it all starts with a decision of the will. Prayer's got to be a big thing in my life. Um, and this isn't really about, you know, perfecting a religious discipline. This is about relating with the most important person ever to exist in the universe, right? This is about a personal relationship with God. Um, and I know myself, right? I know my own weakness and my own struggle and my own sin and the things that I fall short in. And if I really know myself, then I just, I gotta be honest with how bad I need him. And uh, so that's, I think, really important. Um, if prayer isn't a huge priority for my life, and is it really fair for me to say that God is a huge priority for my life? Now, I know that might be a stinging question, but I think it's, it's important, right? I, and we all want to believe God's such a big priority to me. My faith is really important. Uh, well, if that's true, you'd think spending time with him would be a, a big priority. And so you've got to adopt that. No, this is going to be important for me. Um, Jesus was the busiest man on the earth. You know, he had the most important mission on the earth. And uh, more people needed him. The crowds swarmed him. Everybody wanted him. 
and so, so overwhelmingly busy, yet Jesus made time as a regular part of his life to get away and pray and spend time with the Father. Jesus gave us that example. So it's got to start with that choice for priority. And the second thing that we need is we got to find a quiet place. Now, I know that can be challenging, especially if you're raising a family or you're living with roommates or whatever the case may be. But check it out. Jesus, he would leave the 12 and he would escape into the wilderness to be alone in the wilderness and spend time with God the Father. Throughout the Old Testament, there's all these examples of the great men of God building an altar. And that might be something that might be unfamiliar to you, uh, 21st century American. But uh, what it was is they would just, they would erect this altar and that would become their private sanctuary and that was the place that they would seek God and all of these incredible patriarchs and great men and women of God throughout the Old Testament they did that they found their place where they would seek God have you found your place to seek God you know for me for years one of my disciplines has been I like to prayer walk you know it's difficult for me in my house I've got several young kids and I like talking to my wife and I get distracted with things so what's what, what's the most distraction free for me is just getting out of my house walking for long periods of time and uh, I've had some of the most amazing encounters with God um, out for a walk. And so you might find that that's really helpful for you. Uh, one thing that we did in our house uh, this year as we bought a new house is we designed one of our rooms to be used exclusively for reading and for worship and for prayer. And we, we just call it our inspiration room. And I'm working all the time with my kids to ask them not to put their toys in there and not to um, fill it up with all kinds of other things. We don't eat in there. Uh, we don't have a TV in there. This room is set apart for the purpose of prayer. And right now, uh, lots of snow out and I'm not going on very many prayer walks because it's freezing cold here in Spokane. Uh, but I am spending time in the inspiration room praying and seeking God. And so I made a place for that in my life. Um, you know, maybe you've seen the, the movie War Room that came out this year. Uh, if you haven't, it's, it's a great film and it'll give you some inspiration about taking a closet like they did in the movie and turning that into a place of prayer. Anything will work, but you just got to find something that's quiet. So what is that going to be for you? Is it going to be your car or a closet? Uh, maybe you're going to go for a walk or you're going to take over the basement. I don't know what it would be for you, but you got to start with finding a quiet place. Jesus said this in Matthew 6, 6. He says, but when you pray, go and your room and when you have shut the door, pray to your father who is in the secret place. For the father who sees in secret, he'll reward you openly. Find your secret place. Where is the place where you just go and you connect with God? The third thing we need uh, beyond a quiet place is we've got to find a quiet time. And uh, listen, I know that you might not like this idea, uh, but as I've read the Bible and as I've studied great men and women of God throughout history and those who are alive today, what I keep hearing again and again and again when it comes to the discipline of prayer is that the people that are most effective at it and consistent at it and have seen it transform their lives, these are people that wake up really early. Now, I know you might feel like, no, Pastor Danny, I'm not a morning person, and I've heard that a hundred times, and can I just encourage you, uh, in order to find quiet in our society, one of the things that you might need to do is wake up earlier than the rest of society. I find that the noise of our society really starts getting loud uh, about 7.30 for me. People are ready to text and email, and business is ready to go, and it just keeps going all day long uh, until, you know, 9.30 or 10 at night. Uh, and so what I found for me is that if I don't beat up the rest of society, and I don't mean fight them, I mean to get up earlier than everybody else, uh, then they're going to be asking and they're going to be calling and they're going to be requesting. And so I just try to make sure that there's a habit in my life of getting up earlier than everybody else in order to have a quiet time where it's just me and God. Check it out. Jesus got up early. That was a part of his life as he made a regular routine of rising before anybody else. Um, and, and if you look in the Psalms, there's just this repeated theme of seeking God early in the morning. Psalm chapter 5, uh, my voice you shall hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning I will direct it to you and I will look up. Psalm chapter 88, but you have cried out, O Lord, and in the morning my prayer will come before you. Uh, Psalm chapter 119, I rise up before the dawning of the morning and I cry for help. I think there's something cool about rising up earlier in the sun. If I can beat the sun to rising, then I probably can tackle the rest of the day. Um, 
So I'm not saying that's the only way to pray. I'm not saying that you couldn't have a dynamic prayer time at night. Uh, I know some of you, you might have work schedules that make rising early in the morning to pray impossible, or maybe you're up all night long with a crying baby because you've got an infant. Uh, I know there's a lot of other circumstances, uh, but I would encourage you, really think hard. Is getting up earlier something that I could do to make prayer a priority in my life? Um, I know that there's something just great about getting up early and giving God the very first part of my day before I have any other demands with all the other things that go with life. Um, and if you're struggling with feeling tired, like if you just think, I don't know, I'm too tired, I don't know if I can get up any earlier, uh, you know, the real secret is going to bed earlier. Uh, if you go to bed earlier, then it's easier to get up earlier. And that might just sound you know, really practical, but that's the type of thing I want to give you. Go to bed earlier. For me, this this 21 days of prayer and fasting, I've changed my routine, and I started getting up even an hour earlier than I have been. I used to get up at 6 to pray and seek God, and just since this new year, I've decided I'm going to be a 5 a.m. person, and started getting up at 5, and uh, you know what? Uh, by For me, by 9 o'clock, I'm starting to get really tired and go to bed, and I used to stay up at 9 Nine for me wasn't a very productive hour. Uh, I'd spend time watching TV with Jamie or, um, you know, surfing on the internet or chatting or texting, whatever. Uh, but I found that really uh, I've traded that 9 p.m. to 10 p.m., which sometimes turned into 11 or 12, uh, which was mostly devoted to Netflix. Uh, I've traded that for getting up earlier and spending time with Jesus. And anytime you can trade Netflix for prayer, that's a good trade. And so just would encourage you, just try to make a step like that in your life. Uh, the last thing that we need, other than a quiet uh, place and a quiet time and making prayer a priority, the last thing that we need is a quiet mind. Psalm chapter 131, verse 2, I have calmed and quieted myself like a wean child who no longer cries for its mother's milk. I just think that's a beautiful word picture we see in the Bible, like this sleeping baby that's had its fill and it's just ready uh, to rest in God and focus on him. Uh, that's the type of mindset that God wants us to have when we approach him with prayer. Now for me, I know this can be a huge battle and I've talked about this before. Uh, my mind is racing and thinking and it's got all other things that it wants to focus on and it can be just a huge battle to get my mind to stop and focus on Jesus. And so I do anything I can to help that process. I, I put music on while I pray uh, in order to create an atmosphere so it's not just silence. But for me, I have to use instrumental music only because if there's any words going in the music, then I start thinking about those words instead of thinking about God. Um, I have a notebook that I put on a little table uh, besides uh, the place that I pray, or if I'm out for a prayer walk, I'll use my phone. But I have to have a way to capture notes because it isn't just because God is speaking to me. It's because my mind will race and I'll think of all the things I have to do today. And uh, I got to capture those down. And once I write them down, then my mind's free to stop thinking about them. I'm not worrying about those things. The other thing I do a lot when I pray is that I pace around. And you might know this if you've ever come to the office and seen me work or followed me when I pace around when I'm on the phone. For some reason, the, God, the way that God made my body is that when I'm walking or when I'm pacing, uh, if something is, movement is taking place around me, then it helps my mind to focus a little bit. And so uh, I don't hardly ever pray without pacing. Uh, I'll pace in my house or I'll go out for a long walk. Uh, anything I can do to help my mind focus and be calm before God, I'm going to do it because I want to connect with Him. Um, you know, uh, that might have sounded like a lot of different things to do, and it might take a lot of effort to have this type of prayer life that you'd want to have. But in reality, it doesn't. it's not that much. You know, people spend a lot more time and effort and money uh, developing a workout routine that helps them achieve the type of body that they want to have or, you know, going to the gym and putting all that time and money into that or whatever it would be. Um, you know what? The Bible says this in first chap uh, sorry, first Timothy chapter 4 says that physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better, promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. So, so Paul says, you know what? That physical exercise is good, but spiritual exercise is going to be a benefit now, and it's going to be a benefit in heaven. And I know that if you establish a discipline of prayer and a depth of prayer life, you're going to be so happy when you get to the end of 2016. But even more, someday when you step into eternity and you you stand before God face to face and you see what awaits you in that place, you are going to be so excited for the things that came your way as a result of your prayer life.
Let me pray for you as we finish uh, this video. Father, I thank you for everybody watching this video. And God, I pray that you would help us and you would give us grace, Lord, in the discipline of prayer. Lord, this culture is so busy and there's so much that's coming at us all the time. God, I pray for a group of Christians, Lord, that would rise above the busyness and the distraction. And Lord, they would press in uh, to knowing you and Lord, being able to quiet ourselves before you. Lord, help us find a quiet place and help us find a quiet time. And Lord, help us. Lord, quiet our minds before you so that we can hear from you clearly and do the things that you want us to do in life. Lord, help us make prayer a priority in our life. God, it's, it's so important. We can't go through life without you. Oh, we need you, God, more than we've ever needed you before. We love you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for watching this video. We'll see you again next time.